I've, uh, I'm Doug Fullerton. I've been uh, commissioner of the Big Sky Conference for Time Does Fly for 15 years now, and uh, it's uh, it's it's a great transitional time for FCS and what we've been doing. So it's uh, it's I like the strategic nature of the, the, the work we do, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I don't think it's because I'm inherently smart. <laughs> I think it's because I've been around a long time. I, you know, um, there, there are advantages to running up against the problems uh, before, and I started out as, a, as an eighth grade basketball and football coach in Ennis, Montana, and no one would even know where that is unless you were a fly fisherman. Then you would know exactly where it is because it sits on the Madison River in southwest Montana, but I was a high, junior high basketball coach, a high school basketball coach, a college coach, a college AD, and now a commissioner. And the interesting thing is, during that kind of a career, you have seen most of the problems before. And, and so, again, it's it's something that when, when you have those kinds of breadth of experiences, you get called on a lot. And I've been around a long time, and I think I have the trust of the, uh, the people at the top of the FBS. I have the people trust to the people at the NC2A. So, yeah, I, I get asked to serve on a lot of committees. In fact, I begin to turn some down. was just asked the other day if I could take on another couple of roles. But, but right now, it's my plate's pretty full. I'm on the uh, board of directors of NC2A football. I'm on the board of directors of the CFO, which is college football, officiating LLC. I'm chairing the men's basketball officiating LLC for the NC2A. I also serve on the men's basketball committee. People like to call it the selection committee, but it's it's a Division One men's basketball committee has all the responsibility for for everything to do with that with with Division One men's basketball tournament and and uh, so that's a huge responsibility with a lot of travel. I, I I've served uh, on multiple roles. I was the first person to chair uh, the CCA from the FCS, from the FCS uh, uh, subdivision, and the CCA is the Division One commissioner. So I was asked to serve that, to chair that group at one time, and again, it's because I've been around a long time, and uh, I think that they do trust, trust that I have that kind of background to make the right decision. So, yeah, it's a it's a busy time, but a guy needs to learn to say no once in a while, I suppose. Yeah, obviously there has been. I mean, we've you know we've we've had quite a few FCS champions. Uh, um, now, if you ask John Casper, he'd be able to tell you the number right off the top of your head. But I can tell you who they are: Montana a couple times, and Montana State, and Idaho State, and and, and Boise State, and now Eastern Washington in the most recent uh, championship. So you know, one of the things we've prided ourselves for 50 years, basically, uh, is that uh, we're going to play right at the top of the FCS level. And that's the one thing we ask of our schools to commit to their football programs. The thing that's unique about the uh, about the Big Sky Conference, there's really two things. Number one is our longevity. We've been around 50 years. 1963, our 50th year anniversary is in 2013. Uh, the other thing we are is we have schools that look very much like FBS schools. We have schools that are top 100 research institutions that are the lead institutions in their states. Um, that they're in the top 10 in Truman and Goldwater scholarships, in the top five in Rhodes scholarships. And we have these tremendous institutions that you would think would be FBS institutions, but what we don't have is a lot of television sets. We're kind of in the Rocky Mountain region in gorgeous places, if you think about it, where Flagstaff's down on the rim of the Grand Canyon. I got Montana State in Montana next to Glacier Park in Yellowstone. I got Portland State out in Oregon. I got Sacramento, uh, now Davis and Sacramento State in the wine country. I got Cal Poly on the Pacific Ocean. I mean, I got uh, my office is 15 minutes from the Olympic downhill course here. And I'm, I'm not a Weber, but I'm downtown in Ogden, Utah, where Weber is. So, I mean, we're, we're a spectacular conference, great institutions with long longevity. One of the things that we've been able to do is spawn a lot of, uh, give birth to a lot of very good programs, University of Idaho, University of Nevada, and Boise State. They were all uh, members of our institution. Gonzaga was a member of our conference at one time. So, you know, it's been a diverse conference. The, uh, in the most recent history uh, I'm very proud of in the fact that uh, in the last... 12 months, 
uh, the FBS conferences have come after six of our institutions, and all of our institutions have turned them down. Um, they really see a future for where FCS is going, particularly in the West. We're now going to have 13 schools playing football with the inclusion of University of North Dakota, Southern Utah, Cal Poly, and Cal Davis. We're going to have 13 football playing institutions, and what we really want to become is, and that's all the real FCS institutions that are west of the uh, west of St. Louis. I guess if the University of San Diego with no scholarships, but other than that, we really control this space, and that's what we want to do. We want to be the third conference in the West behind the Pac-12 and the and the Mountain West, and then us. And I know the WAC is out here, and that's the one we have our sights on, quite frankly, because. Um, with 13 schools, with great educational institutions, and quite frankly, we can compete competitively with the WAC. So it's, the future is uh, so solid for the Big Sky Conference at this point that uh, we're really excited about what's, what's happening. Well, this will be the last season with uh, with the with the old uh, uh, group of members, and that's that would be a nine team conference with eight, you know, with eight scheduled games. And 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 if you could pick a winner coming out of the, the start of the season, then you're better than I am because, quite frankly, we really have experienced coaches in the league right now, and we all have experienced teams coming back. So it's going to be a tremendous, uh, you know, tremendous uh, battle to see who's going to come out of this league, Montana is always good and they're picked third in the league if, if people like sacramento state now are are picked to be in the top half of the league of course montana state who won it last year is, in, is picked number two in eastern washington won the national championship is picked to win it so i mean you've got you've got those four schools but people like weaver state in northern arizona tremendous tremendous ball clubs i think they're going to be very very good mike Kramer. Kramer coming back to Idaho State, I think they're going to be very good. So it is going to be very, very interesting to see how this one unfolds. I'm, I'm as anxious to get the season started as as anyone. And then, and then as we move into the future years, what we've decided to do is keep it at an eight game eight game schedule. Everybody will play their two rivals every year, and then we will rotate the other schools through an eight game schedule. And it's uh, so everybody gets to play everybody in uh, over about a four year cycle, and and that's going to provide excitement too because I think in that situation we're going to have two, three, and sometimes even four institutions that have real glossy records and will make a run for the playoffs. So again, I, I, I just think football in the Big Sky is very important to us, and uh, I think that the next two or three years could be very, very interesting. You know, I, again, it goes back to what we were talking about a little earlier. Um, we are very traditional institutions. We, we are unlike, um, we're unlike where a lot of FCS institutions are located where they're very, they're a little more local, maybe a little more urban campuses. I mean, if you go to a Montana State or a Montana game, I mean, they, the Winnebago start arriving on Friday, uh, sometimes even Thursday night, and, and, and the, for the weekend in Bozeman or in Missoula or in Flagstaff or, and, and so it looks like a very traditional type um, uh, FBS kind of game. And, you know, Montana sells uh, 21,000 season tickets, which puts it really high on the list of any any uh, place in America. And, and uh, if you went to a game at a place like Montana, you would be just amazed. It is, it is, it is, uh, it is as exciting and it is scripted. They do just such a great job. Imagine the crowd from the day, they, from the moment they walk into that stadium to when they leave as anybody. And I'm talking about at any level. Um, of course, we, we have great rivalries, rivalries in the league, and that is extremely important. We've got Weber State and Idaho State, Northern Arizona, and Weber State have a tremendous rivalry. In the future years, we're going to have Davis, Cal Poly, and Sacramento State. That three-team rivalry in California, of course, then you've got the Montana, Montana States, and actually the Montana States and Montana, along with the University of North Dakota. Um, in the old, old days, I can remember when I was... Uh, uh, going to college in the 60s, if you were going to win the Division II championship, you either went through the two Dakotas, the two Montanas, or San Diego State. That's just what you had to do. And, and uh, so those rivalries are remembered, and I know that they will be rekindled in the future. <laughs> well, that's how 
hard to ask people to have special talent. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm um, again a generalist. I, I grew up in Montana, so I grew up fly fishing when, when before it was cool to do that, and uh, I, I still like to do that. But uh, in and I, and I play golf and I do all the things that, that people do. I was in the military for some time, so I'm a pilot. My wife's a pilot, um, but we don't fly as much as we used to. But the one thing I've, I've taken up over the last few years is oil painting, and I, and I do oil painting. And uh, um, it's, uh, it's good at my age to be getting better at something than to have something failing on you. So <laughs> I, enjoy, I enjoy painting immensely, and I can get lost in it. And if, if and when this comes to an end, which I'm sure it will, uh, um, that's what I plan on doing. Now that's an interesting question. What message would I send to them? You know, the message I send to the schools is is to expect more out of yourself. Um, you know, I think that one AA and FCS may be. Um, if, if you feel that there's there's getting to be such a strain with an FBS that it's actually becoming that there's this real a chance of of a, of a top group breaking off, then I think that. They need to ready themselves to join that bottom of FBS and the top of FCS because they are very similar. Quite frankly, the top of FCS now is spends as much money and is actually a little healthier uh, than the bottom of FBS. But the FBS are getting left behind by the big money programs around the country. So my 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 message to the institutions is to to make yourself as good as you possibly can be and our presidents believe in that um they've, they've done a lot of things within the conference in the last six months we have a big initiative to to work together as conference institutions off the athletic field in the academic endeavors and library purchasing and all kinds of other ways so we are asking ourselves to expect more of ourselves. To the fans and to, to the people who love the, the Big Sky, it's, you know, buckle up because it's going to be another great ride in the Big Sky Conference. It is, it is always fun. Um, it is a typical Western kind of conference, like uh, the old WAC. We have, we, we spawn great quarterbacks. We throw the ball around, but yet they're, you know, we put a ton of people in the NFL all the time. Uh, they're just great football players in this league. And it's going to be, it's going to be a fun time again. Oh boy, so much of it is being at the right place at the right time. Uh, um, I, I, you know, if there's one thing I'm not very good at, I'm not a very good networker, and I think that mentors and networking is important, and I'm probably not very good at that. It's, uh, um, I probably have become better at that in, in, in recent years, but that is extremely important. Um, the, the thing also that that I think you need to be able to do is you need to be able to to start at the bottom and learn it from the bottom up. If you if you want to get into this business, uh, you go out there and you you walk in somewhere and you say I'll be an unpaid intern and I'll do compliance or I'll do whatever I need to do to get into the business and then you just throw yourself into the job and as you do that. Um, I, you know, I think that people will recognize you. You, you need to keep, you know, I, I, I'm a voracious reader. I love to read. Um, and, and you need to keep up with what's happening at universities. You need to understand the setting you're working in. Um, I, so, I, you know, you, you keep doing that as long as you're in the business and you keep learning and people recognize it. Like I say, you keep networking on the side, pick out mentors, people that, that know you and can help you. And... Uh, and then I think you can. I think you can make it work. I'm glad you asked that. I, and I touched on it, but let me expand on it a little bit. The presidents are, are, are of a mind that uh, the conference should become uh, more than just a collection of schedule, but a bunch of institutions that can work together in, in very like-minded ways. And so they have initiative moving forward to uh, to to work outside the athletic department and, quite frankly, outside the student athletes. Uh, again, library shares. Uh, everything is everything is computerized now, but in this times of cut back, you know, libraries cut back and everything from periodic to their to their new additions and so library sharing between uh, 13 institutions can be incredibly powerful for instance um, 
with, uh, with the general student populations of the institutions. We're actually thinking of going so far as uh, some kind of exchange programs, uh, jury periodicals, those kinds of things. Again, all out of the academic side of the house because we feel that if we're working on problems together and working together to, to deliver education at a, at a, at a, in better ways, it just makes us more committed to one another. And I think that's, that's going to be a huge initiative. Uh, the other initiative we have going as we approach our, our 50th year and as we add the schools to get the 13 institutions, we're going to rebrand the big sky and we're going to uh, spend some money that I've squirreled away from my budgets and, and quite frankly, we're going to have a celebration in 2013 of 50 years of, uh, of Division One or, or 50 years of Big Sky being together. We weren't, the one AA didn't come into being until 1981. But, but having said that, um, we're going to have quite a celebration over the next two years of the Big Sky Conference um, and, and our 50 years uh, together and 25 years on the women's side. So it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be a great couple of years. Yeah, I, I do appreciate, uh, you know, I think the SPS um, level of play and, and is gaining enough traction. And, and like I said, I think there's so many, so many monetary pressures at the top of uh, uh, college athletics this day that we may find that our efficient level of play is, is going to really serve us well as we go forward. So for all you fans that are that support FCS football and uh, are listening today, I mean, it, this is a this is an incredible time to be at the FCS level. I think there's going to be tremendous opportunities going forward. Uh, I know that uh, myself and my conference presidents are involved on national issues to try to move FCS brand forward, and I think we'll, we'll end up being very successful on that front. And uh, you know, from the Big Sky Conference's perspective and my perspective personally, like I say, we own all the territory in FCS west of St. Louis, so um, we just think the future is very, very bright for, for the Big Sky Conference.